Well, there you go. There's there's some blues chord, uh, chord changes underneath some A blues licks. Again, we're going to focus on uh, flat three, flat five, and flat seven. Now, the cool thing about the key of A is that all the notes behind the A bar chord at the second fret on every string are all legal notes to use. In the case of the first string, it's a five, flat five, four. We, we've used that repeatedly in G. And then three, flat three, two, then root A, and major seven, which is something we can pass through to the dominant seventh. And then as you go lower, five, you can slide into that. It's all the same on the lower strings. So I've made up some licks. Um, one of one of the first licks is kind of a Josh Graves lick, but Josh Graves played with Flat and Scruggs played the dobro. But let's see how in action I can I can use all these notes behind the A chord, and then we'll see what else I'm doing. So you see, I'm using A notes in combination with notes that are behind the bar. So the open note. That's behind the bar, that's open. And then I slide into a major third. Pull the bar back again to kill that, and I land on a root. I do that twice. And then I slide up to the seventh fret on the top two strings. And at the seventh fret, you have a sixth and a root. So that you have an, uh, you have an F sharp and you have an A. So it's, it's like a six chord, only it's two notes. Okay. And then we repeat the lick again. And then we kind of just do one of these uh, kind of scrunched up little blues phrases. See, I'm using every note there behind the A chord. Open. Second fret, first fret. So I've used really essentially every note except the major seventh and the dominant seventh. And at that point, the chord change goes to the four chord or the D chord. And at, at that point, I do that little slide. So the chord's a D, and I'm using a slide from the C, which is the dominant seventh over the over the four chord, and I don't really slide up to the D chord. I just go from the from the the dominant seventh to the major seventh, but you're not really hearing that major seventh sound so much. Oh, that's actually not, that's a yeah major seventh of a five a four. It just kind of sounds like I'm sliding to D. And in fact, if you want to do that, you can, but I choose to do this. Okay. All right, so then we do that. And then I slide on to the first string. That's a fifth. At this point, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm playing ahead of the band. That's one thing that happens in blues and it happens in all music, is that you kind of split the duration of the four chord. And in the first part of it, you establish the sound of the four chord, the D. And in the second, dura the second part of its duration, you kind of play ahead of the band where you start playing A licks before the band gets there. And what that does is it creates tension in the listener. It's subliminal, but the, the listener's kind of on the edge of the seat for a second. It's like, wow, that's pulling me somewhere. Where's it going? And when the band arrives back at A, there's a sense of release. So here's the, here's the nice comfortable place, the four chord. Right? And that starts the tension where that's an A lick, and I'll do a further lick. Now I don't the chord the band doesn't really get back to A even though I've just played an A lick. That's 
that's still all over the, all over the D chord, the four chord. Uh, until I get to that's when the band arrives at where I am. So I'll kind of do that from the middle. Here's the four chord. There's the tension. Playing now A over D. Here's the band coming back to me and meeting me on the A chord. And then we do a little fill. That's an A chord fill. It's over an A chord. And then the band goes to E and I go there with them. That's a good little position to remember in E. All right, so that all sounds good. And now I'm going to do the same thing. The band is still going to be on E for the half the duration left, and I'm going to play ahead of them. I'm going to play like I'm in, already in A on the A chord. Um, of course, I'm in A the whole time, but I'm going to play like I'm going back to the one chord. Uh, and the band does not arrive at the A chord until I go. And they're there with me at the A as soon as I go. As soon as I hit the, the major third there. So that's kind of a, that's a tricky little look. That might be one of the trickiest ones we've done so far. And I'll go through that slowly. Yeah. Flat my bar out because I'm going to, because I'm going to hit those two notes together. So I put up with a little noise for a second because I want to, I want to be smooth when I get to to the place where I need to play the two notes together. And I can't have the bar tilted up. Now that move there is very common. So I've already done all the work to get there, so I try to get more notes out of it by just pulling the bar back and then getting the dominant seventh. heavy blues this is more used in say uh, uh, jump blues or say like the, the rockabilly kind of bluesy th thing say like Brian Setzer might play but uh, jump blues and swing are very very close cousins they're in fact brother and sister so this this whole solo here uses some sixth which you would find used in swing and you would also find them used in jump blues so again it's not the real heavy Chicago blues sound, but it's more of the, the jump blues sound. <laughs> 